What is up my banjo picking buddies out there? My name is John Moore and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at compensated banjo bridges and letting you guys sort of see the difference that a compensated banjo bridge can make in your banjo's intonation and see if maybe you might need one. Some banjos are more prone to it than others depending on the height of your action. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what these bridges are. So a compensated bridge is a bridge with a stair stepping pattern that goes back further down the head towards the middle of the bridge, towards the third string. So you've got that sort of half moon shape. Now what that does is it creates a little more distance between the third string and the nut than the other strings. Now the reason for that is because the third string is actually the heaviest string on the banjo. It's heavier than the D string. Even though the D string is wound, it's got a lighter core on the inside. So the third string is actually the most affected by the change in tension on the string as you fret it. So as an example, if your strings are say a six, say an eighth of an inch or maybe three sixteenths of an inch off of your fretboard high up on the neck, as you fret it, that's the same thing as you choking it that amount and it actually changes the tension on the string. So your banjo will play more and more out of tune as you go up on the neck. Now we compensate for that to some extent by adjusting the bridge and getting it so the first and the fourth string will play in tune up at the 12th fret. But even then, because of the nature of the banjo, the heaviest string is on the third string, we can't fully compensate for that just with slanting the bridge like they do with guitars. In fact, if you look at a guitar bridge, you'll see they're kind of slanted a little bit. Uh, banjo bridges, we can't really do that because our two finest strings are on opposite ends of the instrument. So we have to have a bridge that is curved if you want to have really correct intonation or as close to you can correct intonation on the banjo. So let me show you guys kind of what this sounds like. Now this is a straight bridge here. This is a straight traditional bridge. It's a Snuffy Smith. It's a lightweight bridge. It's a really bright sounding bridge because it's so lightweight. Uh, let you guys hear what it sounds like. It's in tune. All right. I'm going to play it up here at the 12th fret. Now this bridge is set up properly. It's in the correct position, but the third string plays out of tune and this is something that plagues almost every banjo and that's because the third string is the has the heaviest core of any of the strings you know you hear this in violins if you're in fiddles if you're using steel strings depending on how hard they put the bow to the string it changes the pitch of the string same thing here the more you fret the deeper you have to press that string the higher your action the more it's going to pull those strings out of tune and the heavier the string the more it is affected so I'm using light strings and it still affects it to that extent. Okay, let's go ahead and let you guys hear what this sounds like with a compensated bridge. Okay, so I'm back and I've got the compensated bridge installed on the banjo. I'm gonna go ahead and play the first and the third string together to let you guys hear that they're in tune together. I'll come up to the 12th fret and let you guys hear it. And that's a sight better than it was before. Um, that little bit, just that little bit of compensation that makes a big difference up the neck and it really doesn't affect your tuning down low. It's just up the neck as you go further up because the distance between the frets is smaller, the impact that it's having on the pitch gets greater and greater and it compensates for your action getting higher and higher as you go up the neck. So it really helps your banjo play in tune as you go up higher. You know, for a long time I saw people with these and I was like, why on earth would someone put something so ugly on a beautiful instrument like that? And I just, I was just ignorant to the fact that my banjo was playing out of tune. I just thought that was normal and everyone's banjo played out of tune, which it turns out they kind of do, but it, they don't have to. You can have your banjo play in tune up the neck. You don't have to be shy of that third string whenever you're playing up here at the 12th or at the 17th fret. You can hit that thing like it stole from you. And it'll play in tune. So anyway, guys, I hope this video was helpful to you. And uh, let me guys know if you like it and you found it useful, found the information in it useful. And if you did, please be sure to leave it a like down below and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this from me. If you'd like to feed a banjo player, you can support me on Patreon. I've got a link in the description down below. I'll see you all next week. Later.